Hello, Kinesis 55 students and fellow coaches. Uh, we're back for week number nine of this semester. And um, I appreciated uh, looking at your assignments from last week. I apologize for getting the Zoom video and the assignment out a little later than usual. Um, we're wrapping up our season right now and, and there's a lot going on with our guys getting recruited. And, and again, no excuses, um, uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge that. So if some of you didn't receive it, um, early in the week, like you usually do, it, it came out on Wednesday last week. So uh, I, I definitely take that into consideration when um, you guys are turning stuff in. So if I get it to you late, then the expectation is you got at least a week to finish that. And then really, I'm letting people submit things even later than that. So if you're behind on anything, um, you need to make up some assignments. Um, we've had nine of them. Well, this will be the ninth one, week nine. We've had one each week. So um, check your notes and your emails and see what you're missing and you can still get that stuff turned in. So last week um, we started talking about the actual skill of teaching and we talked about the different modalities, um, the different learning styles that, that people um, use and are sometimes uh, unique to them. And, um, and then we also talked about how good coaches will understand that there are different learning styles and um, understand that every player needs to pass the class, not just the, the A students. Um, and so coaches really have to go the extra mile in terms of making sure their students uh, pass the test because um, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, sometimes uh, the grades for coaches are put in the newspaper and everyone gets to see how many students pass the test. Um, and so coaches will really do a, a thorough job and are usually very, very good teachers, uh, the good coaches. Um, and so uh, this is an exciting part of the class for me because I really enjoy working with uh, student athletes and uh, the, the feeling of satisfaction you get from, from teaching them a skill and empowering them to use that skill and then seeing them use that skill uh, is just, a, it's a great feeling from a coaching standpoint. And, um, you know, you're learning lots of life lessons along the way with that teaching. Um, and because there's an accountability, it's a different kind of accountability. And, and so um, just a great part of this class and a great part of being a coach is the actual teaching um, and the actual coaching. Um, and those two terms to me are synonymous because that's what we do every day. We teach as coaches. Um, so breaking down those teaching styles um, and acknowledging those different teaching styles is super important. So you as a coach, you know, there's so much uh, technology now that's readily available <clears throat> in terms of filming practices, um, filming games, things like that. That's crucial. Most um, learners um, learn the majority of what they learn by seeing and doing um, rather than just being told how to do it. Um, and so you know, if you have the opportunity to film a practice, then show them an example of the way that that should happen, show them their film, show them how they're different, then give them some drills or some techniques that they can work on to improve on that and then film them again later on. And it's really important to show improvement. And um, a, a coach once said, I can't remember who, but he said, uh, make sure you catch them doing good, you know, and you want, so you want to acknowledge the progress as much as you want to acknowledge the things that we need to work on still as a team and, and as individuals. So <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I hope you found some of those tips useful in regards to that. And, and that, you know, when you look at uh, coaching, uh, if you have a 10 minute period to teach a specific skill, you have to look at that like uh, it's like your speech class. OK, um, you want to be a good communicator. You want to um, tell them what you're going to talk about, talk about it and then reinforce some points and tell them what you just talked about. Um, just like they tell you to do when you're giving a speech in your communications class or your interpersonal communication classes. Um, and so you have a 10 minute drill and you say, OK, guys, um, this drill right now, we only have 10 minutes. OK, so um, what we're going to be working on is uh, tackling and. Uh, we're going to do two drills for this, and I need you guys to go at, a, at almost a full speed tempo, and we're going to take the guy all the way to the ground in this drill. Okay, so we have a cone here, we have a cone, and then you start teaching the skill. 
and you start teaching the body language. And then at the end of it, you would say, so just reminders, you guys, um, when we're tackling, make sure we keep our head up, make sure we're not leading with the head. Okay. Make sure we continue to drive our feet, you know, and, and you bullet point what you just told them one more time. Um, and then you have them practice it. Um, and so it literally is a skill that will help you, um, in, in just about anything that you do, because at some point in your lifetime, you're gonna be in front of a group of people presenting a uh, project at work, um, a game plan to a team or something you know, in between there. And the ability to communic communicate effectively, um, ironic that I, I stumbled on the word communication, um, but, but that ability is crucial. And coaches have to do that for two hours every practice you know you're you're the guest speaker for two hours and and um and so it's a great skill and, and coaching can really help you hone in on that skill and and um that skill is something we're going to kind of talk about it's a good lead into our week nine assignment um so great job on the on the teaching um breakdown and the agendas for uh the skills you guys were going to teach um this week we're going to move into two areas one is resources for coaches and the other one um, is practice plans so we talked a little bit about some skills that we were going to teach now we're going to we're going to uh, insert those skills into a practice plan that's going to lead to a game plan um, and then we're going to talk about some resources we're going to talk about resources for coaches before we get into the practice plans um, one of the best ways to gain knowledge in coaching um, in my experience has been to go visit coaches one-on-one -on -one or as a group um, in years past. I can remember <clears throat> uh, when I was coaching at Sonoma State, we went to uh, the 49ers practice and got to meet with their coaches and watch practice. Um, I've traveled to TCU, to USC, to Portland State, to UC Davis, to different colleges around the country to go meet with coaches and sit down for a day or two um, and listen to them and learn from them. But another way to do that is coaches clinics. Um, another way to get access to these coaches, because you say might say, well, man, I don't know any of these big time coaches. They're not going to take a call from me. Um, you might be surprised. They might. Some do. Um, uh, but a lot of people, they're they're so sought after that they have to be wise with who they spend their time with because they've got obligations and they've got speaking engagements and things like that. But um, I have had the opportunity to see some of the greatest coaches of all time at coaches clinics and coaches clinics cost about a hundred bucks to go to. And like, for example, there's a coaches clinic that happens in Berlin game every year called the all sports clinic. This clinic used, I don't know if they still have it, but it used to have experts in every sport. And there would be talks that go on from 8am to 8pm for three days straight. And you have big name coaches from all over the country doing these talks. And it might be, uh, you know, for example, if it was a football one, it might be um, the defensive coordinator from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers talking about man coverage, or it might be the defensive line coach from USC talking about pass rush, um, or it could be a baseball coach from a major baseball school, you know, or track and all the sports. And they're fantastic resources and they're, they're all over the place and they happen year round. Um, and they're inexpensive. And that gives you an opportunity to not only sit and see face to face these coaches, um, how they present things, how they share ideas, um, because you see it, it, in a lot of ways, you're not just there to learn the X's and O's from that coach. You if, if you see a coach that you think is a great communicator and a great motivator, um, you can get lots of things from coaches like that that may not pertain to the style of your team at all, but they're, they're philosophy type things and they're culture type things. Um, so coaches clinics are awesome. Uh, it's also an opportunity um, to network yourself with other coaches and meet other coaches. And that's always fun because um, sometimes we think we're in it um, by ourselves and, and uh, the coaching fraternity in every sport runs deep and uh, coaches are so eager and happy to help each other um, other than game day, um, every other day of the year, coaches are generally pretty happy to help each other. Um, and, and so it's just a great way to, you know, in the lobby of the, of the 
the coaches clinics, there's usually, you know, people having lunch and they're having little round table discussions with small groups of coaches that maybe just came out of a clinic talk and they want to discuss a technique or a philosophy or a strategy in a little more detail. Um, and a lot of times you have access to those speakers after they get done talking. They may, um, I mean, we've had times where we um, set up a, uh, set up an area where there was food um, like a hospitality room at the hotel where the clinic was. And we would invite the, the clinic speakers up to our room and, <clears throat> and uh, serve them dinner, but then have access to them in the room and sit there and ask questions and talk about football and talk about um, their life and their perspective on coaching. And, and uh, man, it was just, it was just really, really uh, valuable in my growth as a coach. And so um, this week's assignment or part of it is for you guys to seek out three coaches clinics. And because we're not actually going to attend these coaches clinics, money is no object, location is no object, and time of year is no object. So um, you literally can find any coaches clinics that exist, and it's very easy to find a lot of them. Um, but I want you to search out three clinics that have speakers that you particularly want to hear from. And I want you to have reasons why you want to hear from them. So for example, um, if you're if you want to run uh, the triangle offense um, and Phil Jackson speaking at a clinic and you're a basketball coach, um, that would be a clinic you would seek out to see Phil Jackson talk about the triangle offense or if you want, you know, so you get it. Um, but that's the idea. You would you would look through some clinics. So you'll you could Google search uh, football clinics, baseball clinics, soccer, soccer clinics. Um, and they'll all come up. And then when you click on the link, typically it will show you who the speakers are. And so look around and um, and find some clinics that have speakers that you would be interested in seeing. And, and then I want you to answer um, the, the four following questions. What is the name of the clinic and the location? That one's pretty easy. Um, but why this clinic? What was it about this clinic? And what speakers would you be going to see from that clinic? And then what do you hope to learn from that particular speaker? I want you to answer those questions for each one of the clinics that you decide on. And um, one of the, the big football clinics that happens every year is called the National Coaches Convention. And that takes place in a different city every year across the United States. And usually about 10,000 football coaches show up to that. And there are speakers for five straight days um, and you learn so much about football and you have so much access to coaches because uh, the NC2A made that a dead period. So nobody's able to recruit during that week. So they really get every coach, college coach, NFL coach that aren't still playing um, and JC and high school coaches, they all go to um, a city and, and learn and talk and meet each other. And some of the greatest connections I've ever had, um, I met at coaches clinics. Um, um, through other people, you know, you're with a group of people, you meet another group of people, and all of a sudden that, that your network is just growing and growing and growing. Um, so that is the assignment part for the coaches clinics. Um, and I'm going to send you this in, in a, a text version that um, will, will outline what, what the assignment is. Um, and then the second part of the assignment this week is to create some practice plans. Um, okay, you're the head coach and um, the season is starting and it's your first three practices that uh, you are gonna outline. And so when you think about the first three practices of the season, you wanna think of some things that you think are foundation things, okay, that you can build on from there. Um, remember that you don't need to teach your athletes every single thing they need to know for that season, you don't need to teach them all that even before the first game. Um, our team this year, we were still, um, we still did not completely install our full offense or defense and the season's over. Um, you have to go with what they can handle and not overload them because the more your athletes are thinking, um, the less they're gonna be reacting and the slower they're gonna be. Um, so your first three practice plans OK, and I want you to, to um, have it broken down in time increments um, and I want you to have it broken down by position. Um, and you can assume that you've got coaches for as many positions as you need. Um, so you're not doing it all by yourself. But the reality is, if you're coaching youth sports, you might be doing it all by yourself. And so 
um, uh, you know, having some helpers is really important. Um, so I want you to make the practice plans. And um, again, these skills that you teach at the beginning um, really should be um, what you think are the most important skills for your athletes to eventually get to where you need them to get to. For example, uh, if you're going to be a, a super defensive type team in soccer um, and you're going to be uh, matching people um, the full game and, and constant pressure, um, well, that's if you're going to hang your hat on that, that's got to be one of the very first things you introduce and the very first things you start teaching the skills to be able to do that. You know, maybe it's uh, just being able to move laterally, maybe it's being able to move backwards and turn and run. Um, but there are skills that allow you to be able to do that that need to be taught, and which is going to be the foundation of everything you do from there out. So you say we're a, a full pressure team, and all of our strategies are going to be based upon that. And then all of our change up strategies are going to be based off of that. And we're going to get into strategies next week. But um, the plan is to make some plans. Okay. So uh, it's time to get to work and put all this knowledge and stuff like that, that we we've acquired and we kind of know where we're going. We know what kind of coach we want to be. We know what we're coaching. Um, we know some skills we've taught. Now we, we've got to start preparing these athletes for a competition and it's always important to have a practice plan and some characteristics of good practice plans. I'll give you, um, while we're talking about this assignment, one is stick to the plan. Okay. And the more you can organize that plan, the smoother your practice is going to go. Um, we have a person at practice that literally blows a whistle every 10 minutes. And we know that that's the next period where we go to. And so our athletes, you hear the whistle blow, they get a break. Boom. We run off to the next uh, drill or the next session or whatever we're doing that particular day. So ha starting with always have a practice plan. OK, always, even if it's written on a piece of paper, scratched in there. Um, but but you want to be organized. If you want your athletes to be organized, you want your team to be organized, then you need to do the same thing. And so when you show up to practice, there need, you need to have practices that have purpose. OK, and so it's important even to tell your team before practice, you know, hey, today is Tuesday. This is our first and 10 day, guys. OK, so we're going to be learning. Uh, the other opponent uh, may be a little sloppy at points, but we, we really need you guys to focus on these couple formations. We need to really focus on these couple plays, okay? And, and that's going to be our goal is that by the end of the practice, we're going to be able to understand what their bread and butter is. And, and then we can build off that foundation for Wednesday or Thursday or Friday as we lead up to the game. So um, purpose-driven practices are really, really important. Nobody wants to go and waste time. And so drills that are not game like or that don't feed into your philosophy or your strategies or your game plan are a waste of time. Um, in your practice plans, in addition to um, having the plan um, and making sure it's, it's in a line um, with everything else that, that, that you're trying to accomplish, um, you need to um, be consistent and as you're developing your practice plans, um, sometimes it's nice to have a schedule, you know, where you say like, okay, the first thing we do is this. And that's kind of how a football practice is. We, we always start out with individual, we call them everyday drills. And those are warm up slash everyday drills that are broken down by position and they're specific drills that they have to do the majority of the time while they're playing their position. That's the first 10 minutes of practice every day. Then we go into a small group setting where we're working on maybe the linebackers and defensive backs will come together and the offensive line and the defensive line will come together. Then we go back to an individual period and we work on what the next part of practice is going to be. And then we have groups at that and we finish with team, um, but it is a purpose driven practice and um, it's very regimented. And one thing that um, we don't do is if we have a 10 minutes to get something right, um, we don't go 11 minutes. Uh, we don't say we're going to be out here uh, until we get it right. Okay, sports is not, it's not like that. You know, when you are in a competition, you have one chance sometimes to get it right. 
And so to help create that sense of urgency with your practices, um, sometimes you might have the worst play ever and it's the last play of a drill and you don't want to end on a bad note, but you don't want to go over in time. Um, and there are some times where you say, we're not going to end on that play. Um, but to, to continue something over and over and over um, can sometimes be detrimental, you know, and, and wear your kids out and drain them. Um, most people learn in short spurts and um, myself included, nobody is, is that interesting where you want to listen to them lecture or scream at you for two straight hours. Um, and so, um, you know, when you say we have 10 minutes and this is the purpose of this drill and this is the purpose of these next 10 minutes and this is what we want to accomplish and you either get there or you don't. And then at the end of those 10 minutes, you can say, guys, we didn't get out of this what we needed to get. We're going to work some more on this tomorrow. But right now we got to move on to the next thing that we need to have you ready for. Um, and so sticking with that practice plan, um, it, it's it, it's really important to not keep going over. And, and, and then because what happens is, um, at least in football, if, if your big group type parts of the practice are more towards the end and you go over in periods earlier than that, um, that pushes the end of that practice. And, and I, I'm a big believer in that our athletes time um, is important too. And we need to respect that. And so we want to be timely and respect their time and say, look, between these two hours, we need you hundred uh, percent. We're not going to go over that. We got one chance to get this or 10 minutes to get this. Here's the plan. Here's the purpose. Let's go and do it. Um, so Keep those things in mind when you're when you're creating your practice plans. And um, the easiest way, um, the easiest program that I've found is Excel. Um, it's really easy to just put the time slots down in a column, and then you can use uh, or in the rows, and then in the columns across the top with a header, you can put in the different position groups, and you can just make boxes on. Okay, we're going to start with a dynamic stretch. Then we're going to go into individual drills by position. Then we're going to go into a group defensive drill or whatever, and you go down the whole practice. And at some point, there might be uh, in the practice plan, you might have the wide receivers are working on a blocking technique, but the quarterbacks are working on handoffs with the running backs. And then the offensive line is working with the defensive line. And you've got that happening all over the place in your practice plan. And then there's times where everybody comes together for certain things. And so that's what I'm um, envisioning with this assignment. Um, a real plan that you could look at that if you had a coach that was just showing up right before practice, you could hand them this and they would be able to look at it and say, OK, I'm good. Um, you know, the reality of, of coaching also another reality of coaching, I should say, is that we are not going to have full time paid assistants that work all day on our game plan and our strategy. The majority of us um, are going to have coaches that work other jobs and that show up on game day or show up at practice and they're walking on the field right as practice is starting. Um, and so you have very little time to talk to them or coach them up, um, but you really do have to coach your coaches. Um, you're the head coach and those coaches need to be saying things the way you want them to say it and coaching the way you want them to coach and uh, be examples of what you're trying to teach. Um, but having a practice plan also allows those coaches to have a chance to have a productive practice themselves. If they don't know the game plan, then they don't know what techniques they should be teaching um, to achieve that game plan. You know, if they don't know the exact purpose of that practice, if they don't know the purpose of each drill, each 10 minutes in that in that practice plan, um, then they're being counterproductive and your players are wasting time. Um, and so having a practice plan and amongst all the other things that I've told you about, it really will help you with your assistant coaches. Um, and sometimes we even send our practice plans out to our players so they have an idea like, OK, Tuesday is going to look like this every Tuesday. It's going to be full pads. We're going to do this, this, this and this. Wednesday is going to look like this. We're going to go half pads. We're going to do this, this, this and this. And um, as we work up to the game, I think it's, you know, I think the players like to know what to expect. And, and, and uh, I think that's helpful. But the coaches 100 um, percent are going to make or break you and their productivity at practice is absolutely essential. Um, so how do you make them the most productive at practice? You make sure they're organized. Now, be realistic and say, well, they didn't spend three hours on the game plan like I did. 
How do I get them to, to, and so you pick things that you say, look, during these 10 minutes here, uh, coach such and such, I need you to teach this and making sure that that skill that they're teaching goes in line with whatever strategy you're trying to install that week. Um, and that's really important. And it's, a, you know, you don't ever want to look over at your assistant coaches and see them doing a drill that's counterproductive to the game plan you're doing that week. Um, or something you're not going to do that's not even in, in the game plan. Um, it's a skill that they're just working on because it's a drill they like to do. Um, in football, those are always the drills where coaches get to throw the ball. They, the coaches, for whatever reason, especially young coaches, that's always their favorite drills. Well, the reality is not everybody catches a football in a, in a football game. Um, and if you look at the number of times defensive players catch a football in a season, um, they had an unbelievable year if they had three interceptions. That's, you know, three times in a season. If you're a receiver, that's a different story. But so you see my point. Don't just do the drills that you think are fun or the ones that you like. They have to be the drills that that feed into your strategy and your game plan for that week. Um, so I hope I've given you guys a little bit of insight on your practice plans and on the coaches clinics this week. Um, and I hope you're you're enjoying the assignments or at least again saying, OK, I'm learning some useful information um, and. Um, we don't have much longer to go. So next week is Thanksgiving week. Um, and uh, we will still have, I'll still send out a Zoom um, lecture and an assignment for next week, but we're, we're getting pretty close to the end and we're working our way up to our, our game plan and then our evaluation of uh, a performance. And so we're kind of going to take you through a whole, the, the journey continues. So as we start getting these practice plans dialed in, uh, along with the skills and drills we need to teach for our strategy that coincides with our philosophy and our culture and all those things. Um, hopefully you'll have enjoyed this journey and feel a lot more um, empowered uh, as a coach and more confident uh, when the time comes for you to do that. So that being said, um, I'm going to sign off now and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And I hope you enjoy this assignment. Bye-bye.